Obviously, we didn't win the election today, but I stand here with my head held high and a heart full of gratitude. And I'll see you at the finish line. Chicago, we did it, y'all. Mayor Lori Lightfoot conceding tonight, setting the stage for a runoff on April 4th between Paul Vallis and Brandon Johnson. New leadership is on its way to City Hall. We have political experts breaking down results in real time, and CBS2 has a team of reporters across Chicago, from the north to the south and everything in between. Our coverage starts right now. Live from CBS2 election headquarters, Chicago decides. Thank you for joining us as Chicago decides who will lead the country's third largest city for the next four years. Great to have you with us. I'm Joe Donlan. And I'm Erica Sargent. It was an unexpectedly fast night in Chicago with results coming in quickly. You can always scan this QR code that's on the bottom of your screen there for the latest numbers. We begin with the race for Chicago's mayor. Right now with 97% of the votes in, Paul Vallis stands at 34%, Brandon Johnson at 20%, and our incumbent mayor, Lori Lightfoot, at 17%. Now we're talking about the runoff now. The finalists will be Paul Vallis and Brandon Johnson heading to that runoff in April. And CBS 2's Charlie DeMar is live at Paul Vallis' campaign headquarters tonight. Charlie? Hey guys, yeah, there's still a number of supporters here at City Hall events. It's a venue in Fulton Market. Maybe some foreshadowing on Paul Vallis' part as he is one step closer to becoming mayor of the city of Chicago. Of course, a huge part of the Vallis campaign was public safety and ensuring that people feel safe in the city of Chicago. He hit on that talking point tonight, and he also stressed how much support he's going to need if he is to win that April runoff. Public safety is the fundamental right of every American. It is a civil right. And it is the principal responsibility of government. And we will have a safe Chicago. We will make Chicago the safest city in America. This campaign says they have a million dollars cash on hand, and they plan to hit the ground running tomorrow with media ads. The campaign also tells us that they have some pretty high profile endorsements coming in the few, next few days. We are live from Paul Vallis' campaign headquarters in Fulton Market. Charlie DeMar, CBS 2 News. Charlie, thank you. And we're going to take you back to the latest results in the race for mayor. Again, 97% of the votes in. Paul Vallis and Brandon Johnson will be headed to that runoff. CBS 2's Marissa Coleman is live at Brandon Johnson's campaign headquarters. Still rocking at this hour, Marissa. Yeah, Joe, Eric, it's really been standing room only here on the west side all night. Moments ago, the supporters here heard from Brandon Johnson, again, the man of the hour. This may have been the campaign surprise of the evening, but the supporters tell us this was no surprise to them who've been by his side the entire time. In the room, a huge crowd filled with west side neighbors, Chicago teachers, union leaders, and members of the United Working Families organization. And it may have been that support, again, that got him to this part of the election. Now, Brandon Johnson, again, has been calling for a better, safer Chicago throughout his entire campaign. He's talked about recruiting social workers Workers to relieve police officers, and he says he wants to invest in youth employment. Now, raising a family in Austin, he says he knows that disinvestment in Chicago's communities, what he calls a tale of two cities, and wants to change that as mayor. Now, the, this, the commissioner, rather, has seen a major surge in the past couple of weeks and told us no one knows who I was just a few weeks ago. They said that this would never happen. I am so freaking proud. <laughs> because we did this. You know, a few months ago, they said they didn't know who I was. Well, if you didn't know, now you know. 
Now the next phase of this campaign already getting started in this room tonight. Johnson calling out his official opponent, Paul Vallis, calling him the author of the tale of two cities. And again, calling out the major differences that we will see on the rest of this campaign trail. We're live in Austin tonight. Marissa Perlman, CBS 2 News. All right, Marissa, thank you very much. Now let's head over to our Dana Kozlov. She is with the Lightfoot campaign. As you take another look at the uh, the balance here. We have 97%. Of course, it's been called the two finalists, but this is with just about all of the votes reported. And our political investigator, Erica. Dana Kosloff, live at Lightfoot's campaign headquarters. Dana. Erica and Joe, everything is very quiet here. There's only a few people left. Uh, the mayor herself also has left. And forget the talk of a, a long night. Mary Lori Lightfoot came out to talk to her supporters less than two hours after the polls closed. She was very composed. She was rather gracious, but you could tell it was very emotional. She said that she called Paul Vallis and Brandon Johnson to congratulate them on making it to a runoff, and she told her supporters it was the honor of a lifetime to be mayor. And regardless of tonight's outcome, we fought the right fights and we put this city on a better path. No doubt about it. The mayor stayed on the floor of Carpenter's Hall for almost 30 minutes after she spoke to her supporters, talking one-on-one -on -one with people. All of her supporters clearly disappointed. In her speech, the mayor said, quote, thank you all deeply, deeply from the bottom of my heart. We were fierce competitors in these last few months, um, but I will be rooting and praying for our next mayor to deliver uh, for the people of the city for years to come. Also touted some of her accomplishments. The mayor also touted some of her accomplishments in her first term and now her only term in office, which included more social workers in schools, more mental health services, and of course investing in the south and west sides. Now, exactly what went wrong? Why exactly she did not make it to a runoff for a second term will be much discussed, I'm sure, over the next uh, couple of days and weeks. But she had been facing a lot of criticism for number one, the crime in the city and her handling of it or lack some would say of handling of some of that violent crime and she had also been criticized for being very non-collaborative which uh, at times combative which also uh, may have affected how voters reacted to her term in office she did say though that when one door closes as her father said another opens for her that will be the case for her and her family moving on after May when she leaves office. But it is definitely a 180 from April of 2019 when she won all 50 wards of the city in a runoff and literally was cheered on by thousands of people at that night's election night party. But now she will be leaving office in a couple of months as a one term mayor. Reporting live at Carpenters Hall in River North, Dana Kozlov, CBS 2 News. Joe and Erica. All right, thanks, Dana. Now let's get to our guests tonight. We are joined by Alderwoman Leslie Harrison, who is stepping down from her fifth ward seat, and Sylvia Puente from the Latino Policy Forum. Thank All you right. for joining us. Give us the headline, Leslie. What happened tonight, in well, your opinion? The headline. The, the, the headline, it's a new day. Mm. It's a new day. Um, not only just at the mayor's uh, level, but also at the city council level. Uh, we've got a lot of runoffs, I think 36, 26, 30, 24, 46, 48, 4, 5, 6, 10, 11, 21. Mm. That's where my last count was. But we still have a lot of aldermen that did retain their seats. Uh, Haddon, Silverstein, uh, Vasquez, Harris, Bill, Quinn, Lopez, Coleman, Curtis, O'Shea, Taylor, and probably some others that yeah. I missed. So, um, yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot. All right, so Sylvia, if we talk about the strategy going forward for these two finalists, Paul Vallis and Brandon Johnson, what do you think it needs to be for them to uh, come out as victors in the end? Well, you know, I think they're both going to have to speak to how do they run and govern for all of Chicago, coming from very different bases. I think that Brandon coming, obviously, from being very, very progressive, 
has to, and, and working people, and with the endorsement of the CTU and many of the other unions, he's going to have to, how does he work with corporate Chicago? How does he work with Lakefront Chicago? I think Vallis' strength, mm -hmm. coming from the Northwest and Southwest, uh, predominantly white wards, how is he going to speak to black and brown Chicagoans? Right? So I, I think that they're both going to have to really articulate a message of being unifiers for the entire city, but obviously coming and overcoming that, if you will, from very different bases of, of what their base of support was that got them over the edge tonight. Leslie, who backs which candidate moving forward, and how important is that? Uh, well, I, you know, I don't know. I, so I, I see we might have Wilson with a Vallis back. Mm -hmm. um, I think... I don't know where we're going to go with the others. <laughs> well, I, I don't. Well, Vallis said he's going to have some I'm big gonna, endorsements tomorrow. I'm going to call. Um, we'll, I'm going to call Brandon New School Progressive, and I'm going to call Congressman Garcia's voters Old School Progressive. Okay. And I don't think the Old School Progressives are going to go with Vallis. Yeah. So if we are talking so, numbers, then those where and, are they going to pick up those votes? And if we look at the majority of, of uh, Garcia's voters voting for Brandon, that puts it at about 150, 160, which is about what Vallis got tonight. Mm. Okay. So I think it's going to depend on does, who does Wilson endorse? Does Mayor Lightfoot endorse anyone? And bottom line, it's going to really depend on will we be able to have a more robust turnout? Uh, than we did tonight because one of the disappoint you know as contentious as this election was one of the disappointing thing is is it's only about a third of our voters voted and that many of our young people did not come out mm -hmm. to vote right. and they're the ones that feel would have the most at stake in our city and our city's future. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to ask you guys to stand by because we're going to rejoin you in just a minute, but we're going to move on to more coverage as well. Yeah, let's check in on those voting totals in the mayor's race again. So we were showing you before. Now, this is the second part of that pact. Jesus Chewy Garcia standing at 14%. Willie Wilson just under double digits at 9%. And Jamal Green at 2%. CBS 2's Marie Savage live for us at Jesus Chewy Garcia's campaign headquarters tonight. Marie? Joe and Erica, anything but quiet here, even though the results of tonight's election was not what Jesus Chuy Garcia was hoping for. His mayoral campaign was hoping that his 40 years of public service would be the calling card to get him the mayor's job, but it was not. The current congressman will keep his job instead. And tonight marks his second failed attempt to getting the top job at Chicago City Hall. Now, his campaign was long on bona fides. Congress, the state legislature, Cook County Board, and also a member of city council. But his vision for the city was short on specifics and support from a wider section of Chicago's progressives. But to those in this room tonight, Garcia said he has no regrets, and he left it all on the field. And it's because of all of these neighborhoods across Chicago that I believe in this city. And tonight, I still believe that Chicago has more of a future than ever before. Now, the congressman gave this message to the crowd here tonight. It was one of unity and support it going forward, not only for the people of Chicago, but his main job will be the one that he currently has, which is serving the people of Illinois' 4th Congressional District. We are live at Apollo's 2000 in Little Village, Marie Saavedra, CBS 2 News. Okay, Marie, thank you. Let's take another look at some of the finalists who were coming in and then actually the candidates who came in at the bottom of the list, including Willie Wilson, who came in at 9%, Jamal Green at 2%. Um, it was an interesting, even late in the night, Willie Wilson was holding out hope. Ah, Remember? Sp speaking of that, let's go to Jermont Terry. He is live covering the Willie Wilson campaign. Jermont, you're getting a message from Willie Wilson here. We heard it in his speech, but also after that, the room may be cleared out, but what's going on there? Yeah, you're right, Erica and Joe. You know, the fans and uh, supporters have left. The stage is coming down. And despite coming in fifth place, Willie Wilson is not ready to say that this race is over. Now, Willie Wilson came out to a large round of applause in the band playing Sweet Home Chicago, but this was not a sweet night or a victory for him, especially when you look at the numbers. And it's those numbers, the undercounted ones, from mail-in ballots as to why Wilson says he cannot concede just yet. We have a mail-in ballot of over 100,000 uh, people who sent in mail-in ballot. So that's too close to call. And so we're not going to make any concession tonight or nothing like that. All right? 
Wilson says he did call Paul Vallis to congratulate him for coming in first, but that's the only call he made tonight, saying that um, the other candidates are and the decisions are not made in his mind overall, but it doesn't look like he has the votes, and we know that Mr. Johnson and Vallis are the ones moving forward. Reporting live at the Swiss Hotel in downtown, where Willie Wilson is still remaining optimistic. <laughs> I'm from Terry. Yeah. Now back to you guys. Yeah. Yes. All yeah. right. Thank you, Jermot. All right. As we told you earlier tonight, Sophia King has conceded as well. CBS 2's Tara Molina is live at her campaign headquarters. Tara. Erica and Joe, the thread throughout Sophia King's mayoral campaign was bringing the city of Chicago together, unifying the city. And in her concession speech here tonight, she said the two candidates Chicago now has to choose from are on two extremes. She urged both of those candidates to meet somewhere in the middle. With a law and order candidate on one end in Vallis and a candidate who wants to see police defunded on the other in Johnson, King said both could use some of her vision of unity, and she hopes they'll adopt it. Re building bridges in Chicago, saying the city has already been through so much pain, too much pain, bringing up a point she made throughout her campaign. Police can be supported and uplifted, but still be held accountable. So part of my message to them will be to encourage them to adopt our message, uh, to do what's right uh, for the people, to bring us together, to make sure that our teachers are celebrated, that our police are celebrated. King thanked her family and her supporters and heard a very loud round of cheers here tonight when she said, of course, she'll find a way to stay involved and continue to make an impact here in Chicago. Reporting live in Bronzeville, I'm Tara Molina, CBS2 News. Okay, Tara, thank you. Let's check back in with our guest right now, older woman Leslie Hairston, who's stepping down from her fifth ward seat, and Sylvia Puente from the Latino Policy Forum. So how did Brandon Johnson do this tonight? I think, um, as I said, with Brandon being New School Progressive really forged a new rainbow coalition that had a really significant ground game. Early, too. And, and an early ground game mm -hmm. because uh, early on, um, not only did he have obviously the CTU and all the other uh, endorsements that he had, but interesting, for, for better or worse, with respect to the Latino community, he had the majority of the northwest side latino elected officials led by congressman uh, delia mm -hmm. ramirez all on their ground game for him mm -hmm. okay L leslie is there anything that you want to add before we go to this next no. question no i all think right. she summed it up well okay so if we're talking about public safety we know that that was huge for all of these candidates particularly Vallis. but what have you not heard from these candidates these two finalists that you would want to hear going forward in the runoff I, I would want to know how they're going to do it, how they're going to pay for it, and when are they going to comply with the consent decree. The consent decree. And any other issue besides public safety that you think they need to focus on? I think they need to go back to neighborhood community policing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. as much as we talk about public safety and crime, I think education could potentially be a very big part of this campaign and what's ahead for us because you have Brandon Johnson with the CTU behind him and a man in Paul Vallis who used to run the CPS. True. I think education is going to be key. We know that the city of Roman is declining. We know that we have large vacancies still in a lot of schools, and there's been a lot of challenges on if we're going to have to go through another round of school closures. Mm -hmm. We're going to have an elected school board, which is going to be really, really fascinating. Mm -hmm. But one of the things, I don't think we've talked enough about budget. I don't think we've not talked enough about finances. But I think the other thing that both of these candidates are going to have to talk about is not only how do we focus on our neighborhoods and our everyday Chicagoans, but how do we still keep Chicago a global city? Mm -hmm. Right, and give, given Chicago's position as both a center of tourism, but really being a global city. So how do we appeal to neighborhood interests, the business interests, and our global interests? Just 10 seconds, wrap us up here. 10 seconds, uh, Chicago has a lot of attention or potential, and I think that we need to elevate um, who we are as a city, and I'm looking forward to the candidate that is going to align most with what I see.